Hello there, my name's Jeremy. I'm the builder and one of the directors of Positive Footprint. I'd like to start by thanking James and Jasmine for opening their home and giving a tour of it. I'm especially excited that they are enjoying it as much as we hoped that they would. Even though it looked a little bit wet out there, it looked toasty and warm inside. Right, what I'd like to talk about today is the energy performance. For renovation, 3.3 kilowatt hours per day is extremely low. And especially considering there is no gas, this house is all electric, uh, that is an exceptional score. So how did they achieve it? So the house was very much the average Victorian home and the average Victorian home produces 8.8 .8 tonnes of carbon dioxide every year in the energy that it uses. And here's a split of the energy that it uses. Most of it goes into space conditioning, fair amount into water heating and appliances and then lighting and cooking. And if you combine the average gas and electric bill together, you get $2,686. So what did the cheese house do that um, minimised and got rid of this pie? Let's have a look. The first thing is that the extension was done with passive solar principles that allowed, uh, allowed the house to get to a high star rating. So 7.9 stars out of 10, very high for renovation. Um, one of the reasons this was high is because Jasmine and James realised it was important to make the existing part of the house also perform well. And the house needed weatherboard changes. So we took off the rotten weatherboards, we replaced the installation nice and tightly, reflective foil, put on the weatherboards that were still okay and put on new ones where they weren't. Inside, we insulate under the floors and the attic of the existing house. And so doing all that and achieving the 7.9 star rating, you can see versus the average home, that is already a huge amount of pie gone, at least a third of it gone, um, just by building a nice high performing home. Then, um, to get rid of a bit more of this space conditioning wedge, we put on energy efficient heating system. So this is a heat pump hydronics and reverse cycle air conditioners. Both of them are actually heat shifters in that they take heat from the outside air and put it into the house. Or if it's cooling mode, take it from the house and put it outside. They are very efficient at what they do with a coefficient of performance somewhere between two and three for the heaters and three plus for the air conditioners, which effectively means you can provide this much heat with about a half to a third of the power. So you can see straight away, we've saved about half of this whole pie simply by good design and then efficient heating cooling. The next segment that was looked at was water heating. The first strategy, of course, is to minimise the amount of hot water. Half of the hot water of a house goes to the shower. So shower heads were chosen to be low flow shower heads. Um, you can see that the uh, amount of pie here is reduced by about a third. That also includes the washing machine, which was a front loader rather than a top loader. Front loaders use less water, so use less energy to heat it. And that's the sort of savings that you can get from water, hot water efficiency. Then once again, the hot water unit that um, provided that hot water, we chose a heat pump version. This one has a coefficient performance of between three and four, depending on the air temperature outside, which effectively means that it only uses about a third of the energy to provide this much hot water. So that reduces the pie for hot water heating considerably. Lighting, lighting's an easy one. Choose LEDs rather than other types of bulbs. And instead of down lights, um, have lights that hang into the living spaces. They not only provide a lot more output of light, whereas down lights only look down, but also they don't create holes in your plaster, which effectively let um, air leakage in and out. And if you do that, you get a saving on the lighting wedge. The cooking wedge. So this house being all electric, the Jasmine and James have chosen an induction cooktop. The induction cooktops are 50% more efficient than a gas cooktop. But also, um, if you do have induction cooking, there is no longer any need for gas on the property. And there is no gas meter here, which saves Jasmine and James approximately $300 every year um, 
on connection fees. And the last wedge of the pie is appliances. So um, Jasmine James uh, effectively just went shopping and chose higher star ratings than lower star ratings. And that's an easy process to do. If you do that, again, you get about a third of a wedge saving there. But you can see how we've gone all the way around the, around the circle here. And we've saved at least two thirds of the energy compared to a standard home, just by making simple decisions. The last piece of the puzzle is to then provide enough power on your house that you're producing the amount of power that is required for what's left of the energy needs of your home. And with a 4.7 kilowatt panel system, this house nearly provides everything they need. But Jasmine and James have chosen a provider that provides 100% um, green energy with carbon offsets. So effectively, that pretty much removes all of the carbon intensity of the house. This is effectively a renovation that is now carbon neutral. So what are the savings? First of all, a lot of dollar savings. Like I said, the average home, $2,686 and Jasmine and James will be saving a large proportion of that. The average home produces 8.8 .8 tons of carbon dioxide every year. This house saves it. It is not needed to be burnt in the first place. And over the life of the house, assuming a 75 years, which is quite reasonable, that's a 600 plus tonne saving. That's not only a lot of weight, but a huge volume in gas terms. So there's a lot of simple things that you can do to make your new homes and renovations significantly less carbon intensive and cheaper to run. The price points are right, so it's time to do it. I hope you enjoyed the tour of the Cheese House. And once again, I thank Jasmine and James for opening their doors.